All right, we're back, and now we are going to be talking about power chords. Power chords are by far the most widely used chord in rock music, and it's what's going to give you that really cool sound that you hear with a lot of the songs you like to listen to. So uh, let me just play a quick little intro with power chords, and then we'll break it down and show you what's up. Cool. So those are power chords. As you can see, it's got that real, uh, real good rock sound that you hear a lot. Uh, the really cool thing about these chords, just like the scale we just learned, is that they're movable. So once you learn the shape, it's just a matter of moving it to a different spot on the neck to get a different chord happening. Okay. So let's break this down and uh, from square one, and we'll see what we can get going with it. Uh, and just to note, uh, I had my distortion on for that uh, little little chord progression. So on your amp, it's either um, distortion or gain, and you usually either have a button or a switch that'll change channels. So um, that's the sound we're looking for. I'm gonna go back to a clean tone though to show you uh, how to break this down so we can get it to sound good, okay? So we'll start off uh, with a lot of things, like a lot of things we do, at the fifth fret. It's always just a good place in the middle of the neck to work, and then we could always move around from there. So just to note, that note, uh, the name of that note at the 5th fret on the big E string is A. Um, and then also the notation for a power chord is a little 5. So whenever you see a chord name with a little 5 next to it, that means that you're going to play a power chord. Okay. So let's start out by putting um, our first finger on the 5th fret of the big E string. Okay. Then what we're going to do is put our ring finger on the seventh fret of the A string and our pinky on the seventh fret of the D string. Just like with the other chords we were talking about, I want to keep these two fingers tight together, okay? Um, squeeze them up, pushing good and hard together so that way they feel like one big finger, okay? So there's only three notes in this chord. Actually, there's only two notes in the chord, but you commonly put the pinky down to add um, uh, the same note twice to get a fuller sound. So let's do this one at a time, hit each note and see how they sound. Okay, good. So again, technique, gonna stay in the middle of the fret, your thumb's gonna stay in the middle of the neck facing up, some room between my palm and the fretboard, my fingers are nice and curved and pushing in. Okay, my first finger is going to lay it a little more flat for this chord, and we'll talk about that in a second. But let's one more time see if we can get those notes to sound good. All right, good. So again, one at a time before I play it all at once. Okay, so those are the basic chords, um, or the basic notes. Now, some we need to be careful of here, the last three strings, okay, we don't want those to ring out. Now, again, you don't want, you can just be careful with your right hand or your strumming hand the way you play it, but that's going to be um, problematic after you get used to this because you're going to want to have fun rocking out and playing hard and heavy. So to do that, what you're going to want to do is mute those last three strings. The way we do that is with our first finger. Okay, if you look at my first finger, I'm going to lay it a lot more flat than usual. That's going to have this part of my finger touch, um, touch the bottom three strings and mute them. So here's how I, it sounds if I do one string at a time. Okay, good. So you can see how those are not ringing out and my top three are. So now I could go ahead and strum them all. Right? And that way the only three strings that ring out are the top three. Okay, So that'll take some practicing, but again, you only want the top three to ring out, the bottom three should mute, and I'm going to do that by laying the first finger more flat. Okay, So that's the basic shape of the power chord. All right? Now, like we said, it's movable. So we're going to do a little chord progression here, <clears throat> and we're going to start at the fifth fret, but we're going to go the fifth fret, the first fret, the, third, the third fret, and then back to the fifth fret. Those notes are A, F, and G. 
Okay, so we're gonna go A5, F5, G5. Okay, here's how it sounds when we're done with it. Okay, it's a pretty common rock progression, so uh, you'll have some fun with this one once you get it down really good. So, to break it down, what we wanna do um, before we play it all at once is play each chord one note at a time but hold the notes out and see how long you can get them to sustain for. In other words, like this. Okay. <clears throat> what that does is it helps your hand get to know the shape really well. Um, by pushing down and holding down, the sustain just keeps the notes ringing. So that way my hand memorizes the shape and how hard it needs to push down to get the chord to sound good. Um, after you do that a few times and you could hear the notes ring out really well, then go ahead and play all the chords, all the notes at once. All right, good. So again, even if you don't want to do the chord progression, if you take the first chord and do one note at a time, just hold it there and see how long you could have them ring out, okay? If you do this and they come off, okay, you're letting up the pressure. So make sure you keep it down so that notes, so the notes sound really good, okay? So that's the chord and the chord progression. Now that was all based on the E string. We could actually do the same chord, but base it on the A string. All we need to do is move each finger down one string each, okay? So now that we're there, it's the same chord shape, and now we're just gonna focus on those three notes, on those three strings. Okay, good. So now, there's an extra thing though that we need to worry about when we base this shape on the A string. The big E string should not be ringing out. If it does, you're gonna get a pretty wicked uh, sound. All right, it's gonna have that big low bassy note that's not gonna sound good with the chord. So, what I could do to control this note is use the tip of my first finger to barely touch that string and again mute it, okay? So if I do one note at a time with a clean tone, you can see that it's not ringing out, okay? All right, and I still want the first finger to push down on the A string so I get that note to ring, okay? So now I'm free to go ahead and hit all the strings and it sounds good and tight, okay? So let's try that same chord progression, but now we're gonna do it on the A string. So these notes are D, B flat, and C, okay? Here's how it sounds. All right, cool. So same movement, uh, as you can see, it's a movable shape and um, my chord is gonna stay the same, it just moves, okay? So, something to think about when you do move these chords. If you look at my hand, the whole shape of my hand stays tightened together, and the whole arm moves, okay? So, the more you could keep your fingers in the same position, the better. At first, if you kinda come up, let your fingers wander, and then figure it out again, you're gonna have more of a time in between until it sounds good. So when you move, try and lock your hand in the same shape, and that way you have your chord ready to go wherever you are, okay? So these chords are mostly done on the E and the A strings, so um, experiment playing them all over the place, okay? And I'll give you some more chord progressions as we go, but start there and see how you can get it to sound, okay? So those power chords, and uh, we'll be back soon to talk about some cool techniques you could do um, to make them uh, more fun to play. Thank <laughs> you.